Hello, this is Emily Moore from Eggwell Farm. I am here at one of my brooders. And one of the things that we do is uh, we're constantly painting them. We paint them to get it more sterile. And we also clean it first, but it's already been clean. I got all the shavings and most of the um, dirty spots out. Now it's dry, so I'm getting ready to paint. And the purpose on this round is because I have a mother hen that her two little ones are not feeling too hot. So I am going to put it, them in here for treatment until we can get them better. Okay. Now I threw a quick paint job as you can see. It was a quickie. The whole point is to get it sterilized. And uh, really, I'm going to go back and get that corner. I really don't want any words that's valuable. Even though it's just been scrubbed, that a germ could survive in. Corners are great corners. And uh, I'll come back and take care of that. Alright, as you can see, I done took care of my corners. Everything is good to go. So now, I'm going to let the 175-watt heat lamp dry this up for me. And we're going to cut the bag for it. Okay, what we're doing here, we're recycling one of our feed bags. Now, we are a tractor supply fan. Especially the one that's located right here in Greece, South Carolina. They're the most friendly, helpful people on the planet. But, um, what we do 50 um, pound bags, these bags are perfect for layering the bottom of your um, brooders because we use shavings um, to keep the poop, your little brooder as clean as possible. Okay, now I just cut open my feed bag. What I did is just cut the seam off on one end, and I cut along the side. So the next step is I'm going to do is um, cut it to the size of my brooder to make it fit. All right, I am still waiting for the balls to dry a little bit, and um, I got the heat lamp hanging in there for more of a speed dry. But I already laid this bag down. You see, and I actually um, got two layers going. That way, the floor is really protected. Now, I'm getting ready to make us these little chicks uh, stand. And it's only because all of our um, other stands are in use. So, I need to make another one. And this is a roost that we use. But I want to really stress the importance of using Vicron on everything. You see how there's dirt on that? I'm going to take it in the sink and wash it clean. And probably throw a little paint on it. But I'm going to show you how to make a stand. Now all I did is took a leftover piece of OSB, nothing fancy. And I got a 2 by 4 for the legs. Once again, nothing fancy. It's just a leftover piece. Once again, you don't have to be perfect. Uh, it's just a simple cut. You want the bottom of your um, one quart uh, jar to fit. Um, and it's about the size of my hand. So I'm going to cut along right here. Now, as you can see, I did not aim for perfection. It was just make a point. You do not have to be perfect with the measurement. You just want the water jar you're putting on the base to be able to fit here and be stable. Now, as you see, I like to use the deck screws. And I like these things because, number one, they're easy to um, pull out, put in. I'm also doing this on the 2x4 on the 2 inch side. So I'm going to drill into the 2 inch. Okay, the brooder is ready. I do have sugar in the water because I'm separating them from their mama. Um, and the sugar will help their anxiety 
of the new transfer and as you can see I got a roost and this roost has actually discouraged them from wanting to sit on their waters and new new in it um, my feeder I like to have it hanging so they can't dig it out it'll be less tempting to dig all of it out now for the move now they just got moved from their mama and uh, I really hate this part because um, the mamas do miss their babies uh, but in order to save their lives because this child right here that's closest to the camera is way too skinny so either she's running them too much or they caught something so by having them in this box I'll be able to find out that's it from Emily from Eggwell Farm.